The Boston keratoprosthesis is serious surgery. There are basically two types of this device. There's the type 2 K-Pro, which is the one with the optical stem that goes through the patient's upper lid. And that's very uncommonly done here in the United States. Almost always the type that's used here is this type 1 K-Pro. And that has the corneal tissue with the optical stem mounted on the titanium back plate with those little holes that are Swiss cheesing through the entire device. And this is not a new thing. This has been around for at least, you know, I've been doing this operation myself personally for 10 or 12 years. And it's a big surgery, but it's the only thing that will help some patients with terrible pathologies. People who have corneal opacities and who are aphakic and aneuritic, people who have limbal stem cell problems. I mean, this is the only thing that will help some of these patients with terrible eyes. Um, now, interestingly, there's a new version of the K-Pro, and that is this so-called Lucia type variant, which was apparently FDA approved in 2019, although I myself only first started to hear about it maybe a year or two ago. And one question I asked myself when I heard about this Lucia is, well, what, what are the advantages of the type Lucia over the type one. Why would someone want to use this new type of K-Pro? Well, it turns out that the new type of K-Pro is not really supposed to have any advantages for the doctor or for the patient. The reason for the switch to the Lucia type is to make the device more affordable. And specifically, it's to reduce machining time such that the thing takes less long to create by altering how the back plate fits into the optical stem and also by switching to a photo etching instead of lathing process for carving the titanium. So the bottom line is that the thing is not supposed to be better. It's supposed to be cheaper. And of course, the goal for that is to make it more accessible to patients around the world. Um, the reason I'm mentioning that is because yesterday I had my first patient in which I implanted a Boston K-Pro Lucia type. And I really did not know what to expect going into the operation. How do you assemble the device? Is it going to be weird to work with or put together considering that specifically it's been changed to be cheaper with how the titanium backplate fits onto the stem? Is that going to affect how it feels to put it together? So anyway, I made this video from yesterday's case to show you what it was like in practice so you won't have to go through the same bit of nervous anxiety on your first cases as a surgeon putting this together. So this is me operating yesterday. We've removed this corneoscleral rim from its stored solution that it was delivered to us from the eye bank. I'm putting it in this little coronet tree fine and I'm trephinating it to a size that I typically use, and that's maybe about nine millimeters here. I, I like using nine millimeters because conventionally for these keratoprosthesis devices, the back plate is 8.75 millimeters. So you need a donor corneal button that's at least as big as the back plate. So often I use nine millimeters. So there's a little bit of extra room so the centration doesn't have to be perfect. So here this is a nine millimeter punch and I've just punched the center of the cornea here from the corneoscleral rim and I'm engaging this scleral rim and just sort of spinning it to verify there are no lingering connections between the cornea and the scleral rim. So after I've spun it enough times to convince myself that there are no attachments, I remove and culture that corneal scleral rim that's left over. This is a three millimeter skin punch, and I'm gonna use that to punch this central optical aperture in this donor tissue. And I'm drying this area off in the well because I don't want the button to move when I put the skin punch down into it. I want there to be some frictional engagement to help avoid sliding. The other thing is that you'll notice I'm punching this after I've punched the original corneal size. And the reason is I feel like I get better centration that way. So here we go. I'm punching this central three millimeter 
optical stem aperture. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to push down centrally, and then I'm going to reach peripherally with some tooth forceps, and I'm going to engage that, that little rim donut of corneal tissue and spin it enough time for me to verify that there are no lingering connections. And this is something I highly recommend because the skin punch is not nearly as sharp as the conventional corneal tree finds that you and I might be useful used to and you really want to make sure there are no little lingering connections. So after I've done that, I've made this little central three millimeter aperture, I discard that little button which we removed and I'll center this donor tissue back in the dish while I evaluate the other components of the K-Pro device that were shipped to me. So there are two other little cartridges that come in the pack. Here's one of them. It's got this little white cap on it. I unscrew it. And the only thing in this dish is the titanium back plate. That's it. Okay. So we'll use that, but we're not ready for that. So we open up the only other cartridge that we have. And here's the optical stem. So it's very important not to drop these little things on the ground. Um, in the event that you do, by the way, we, we called Klaus Dolman at some point and asked, well, what happens if you drop one of these things on the ground? Do you just, do you cancel the case? I mean, do you, do you autoclave them? And what Klaus Dolman says is just put them in betadine because betadine apparently is very safe for removing contaminants on these devices. And if you put them in the autoclave, evidently this optical stem mounts. So don't autoclave it if you drop it on the ground. Of course, try not to drop it on the ground. So anyway, we remove the optical stem and I place it back in the dish with that corneal donut and then just drape it over the surface here, okay? And I'm not, I'm trying not to be gratuitously rough with it, but this is not going to be viable endothelium, so you don't have to be overly delicate with your handling. You kind of want to just efficiently put it down in place. Um, at this point, what we typically do is we lubricate the back surface of this corneal tissue with a little viscoelastic. Doesn't matter what kind of viscoelastic you use, OccuCoat or dispersive or cohesive, it doesn't matter. But we typically put some buffering gel there. Then we grab the only other thing in the pack, which is this titanium backplate, and I lightly seed it down around that optical stem using these forceps. And you can kind of feel it fit down shallowly in the groove. Now, this little white plunger thing comes with the Lucia device. It looks different than the normal K-Pro plunger. There's a skinny end and a fat end. And you use the fat end to push down directly onto the device. And when you push down, you can hear and feel it click down into place. It's not one, it's several little clicks down. And it's the satisfying audible thunk as it settles down into position. And when you do that, the thing kind of gets stuck up in there. It's sort of vacuum suctioned on there, but you just peel it off and it's no problem. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that the K-Pro backplate of the Lucia device is number one, it's colored. This is anodized titanium. And you can get it in a blue or a brown. And that actually is a little bit of a cosmetic advantage for some patients. But the other nice thing about this device is that the back plate is only seven and a half millimeters. It's not 8.75 millimeters, which is what it was in the type one. And that's really nice because it means you can use smaller donor graphs. You're not confined to graphs of nine millimeters, nine and a half, ten, you can use something like a seven, seven, five, or an eight if you want. So the smaller titanium backplate back actually gives you much more freedom and flexibility in how you size these tissues. So once I have this donor graft prepared, then I turn my attention to the patient because I don't want to take the chance of having some problem with the donor graft before we get into the patient. So this is an eye that's aphagic, that's got iris trauma, it's got a previous uh, 14 millimeter 
penetrating graft. You can see the stitches way out in the periphery. So this is also an eye with limbal stem cell deficiency. I'm using a cyclodialysis spatula here just to sever these peripheral anterior synechia that are present from where the iris is in contact with the old graft. And then we sew the keratoprosthesis into position using, running su or using interrupted sutures just like we always do. So this is what the eye looks like at the end of the operation. It's a beautiful image. I mean, it's a gorgeous prosthetic. I mean, that really is an exciting, interesting thing to look at. It's a, you know, sort of a fun experience to put in. And I saw our patient this morning and she's doing very well with the surgery. So it has ended up to be a gratifying experience. Um, but when I was evaluating doing this operation, uh, I knew very little about what was different about the Lucia device as compared to all of the other K-Pros that I've ever used. And I was a little bit hesitant to do the surgery because I thought, what am I going to experience on the operating room table? Uh, the biggest takeaways is the actually assembly of the device is very straightforward. It's very similar to the click-on style of the Type 1 K-Pro. The biggest difference is that uh, the back plate is smaller. Instead of 8.75 millimeters of titanium, it's just 7.5 millimeters. So it allows you greater flexibility in sizing the donor tissue. So if you're a corneal surgeon and you're doing keratoprostheses or you're thinking about doing prostheses and you're thinking, I'm not so sure about this new cheaper version of the device, it seems to be just as nice actually and offer some improved benefits for the surgeon, believe it or not, as well as the same good results for the patient. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been educational.